Hey Facebook world, welcome to the studio. My name is Allison Jensen and I am the owner of Orange Hazel School of Art here in downtown Liberty, Missouri. And today I wanted to share with you a Valentine's slime recipe. Believe it or not, I've gotten three messages this week of people who needed a slime recipe and I thought, well, for goodness sakes, we better share it. So this is going to be a puffy slime and I already made up a batch here, so I'll show you what it looks like. We'll talk through maybe some of the, the feedback I get from parents about the slime, maybe that they've tried at home, and um, if you've had some recipes fail you, feel free to, to comment down below. I took my glasses off, so I actually can't even like see you on the screen, but I've got a light over here, and with my glasses on, it made a really funny reflection. So I can see that there is a comment, and I'll have to like peer in there if you, if you have a comment or a question. Um, so this is the puffy slime that we're going to make, and you can see I've got it actually swirled with a bunch of different Valentine's Day colors. I did pinks and purples, um, so it's all swirled together. It's a puffy slime, so it's not the, uh, the really thick slime. It actually has some air in it, and it's, it's a really fun one. It's got kind of a marshmallow texture to it. So it's one of our favorite recipes that we do here in the studio, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Sound good? So let me put this one down. You're going to need something to mix in, and this is my favorite thing. It is a just a dollar store tub. It's a, in the wash basin in like the dish area. We use them for everything here at the studio. So you're gonna need something like that. You could also use a mixing bowl. Our favorite thing to mix with is a spatula. And again, it's just a cheap dollar store spatula. Um, you're gonna need some shaving cream, and that's what's gonna give us that puffy texture. We're gonna be using a white glue today. You do not need to have a container that this is this big. Um, it's just what we have at the studio. So if you've got the little bottles of glue, that's just fine. Um, and then you're gonna need something to color your slime with. I've got my liquid washable watercolors here. And uh, you could use food coloring if you've got food coloring as well. And then the magic ingredient, right? Because just shaving cream and glue and food coloring by itself does not make a slime. It makes um, our, our uh, snow paint, if you saw that. We made snow paint one time. That was the ingredients for snow paint. So it makes a great snow paint, but it does not make a slime. So you're going to need a solution of some kind. A lot of the recipes that, um, that we see nowadays are using a saline solution, and you can absolutely use that. We actually make our own borax solution, and I've got a video that'll be in our newsletter that talks about how to make this solution. Um, we use just one cup of warm water and a teaspoon of borax and just stir it till it dissolves and then we make it obviously in bulk quantities and fill these teeny little squeeze bottles. This is going to be our solution. Again, you can make a borax solution up or you can go ahead and use saline solution. I think I did some research and my understanding is it's the same active ingredient that takes our liquid of glue and turns it into a non-Newtonian fluid. It's the same um, reactive agent in contact lens solution and borax. That's my understanding anyway. It's just that the saline solution is already in a solution. The borax, we need to make one. This is much more cost effective for us in the quantity that we make it. That's why we use borax. All right, so let's get to town here. I've got my shaving cream. That's what's going to go into my container first. And I do not measure. So I'm eyeballing there. That is about a cup of shaving cream. I like to make my slime in pretty small batches. We're gonna go just a tad bit more to almost two cups of shaving cream. I don't wanna fill this whole thing and it just gets too, gets too monstr like monstrous to actually work with and need when I get to that. So I got about two cups of shaving cream here and I'm gonna go with about a half a cup of glue. Now, if you wanna use measuring cups and measure, you go right ahead. I don't need one more thing to wash. So I am going to eyeball it and I go for about a half a cup of white school glue in there. The next thing I'm going to add are my colors. I think I'll make a purple batch. This is my liquid washable watercolors. We talk about it all the time. It's our favorite thing that we use to actually color just about anything that we're doing because it's washable. So you can use food coloring as well. And I've got, the more you use, the darker the color. Let's make a really dark purple. I made a really light purple last time. Let's make a dark purple. And see, I got a whole bunch in there. Now we do the stirring part. And this is where you're just folding it in. So if you've got a kid who likes to bake, right, and they're good at like meringues or um, what's that, like a mousse dessert, uh, they'll be good at folding egg whites. We don't want to deflate all the air that we've got going on in the shaving cream, so we're not going to whip it or stir it really hard. We're just folding it in. It kind of looks like purple marshmallow fluff right now. So we get it all kind of combined together. Getting the glue into the shaving cream is really the most important part. The purple is not, it'll be fine if the purple is not completely put together. Get that? 
So we got that all mixed in together. Now we do the saline solution. So this, or the, the borax solution in my case. This is where I think most people go wrong. I really do. This is where I think that we end up with um, either too much of the borax and it gets really like rubbery, right? It's not a fluid anymore. It doesn't work like slime. It just works like a putty almost. We want it to still have the properties of a fluid when we let it drip off of our hands. So we don't want to use too much of this, but you don't put enough on there and that's where you end up with sticky hot messes. So we want to add just a little bit at a time because it doesn't take much. So I put a couple drops in there that was probably about an eighth of a, tea, of a, of a teaspoon. So I mean it wasn't much for, for my amount. And I'm going to scrape the bottom and just kind of keep folding it into itself. We'll see some lumps start to form. This is going to be a process. This is going to take a while. Right? It doesn't just gel together instantly. It does come together. Um, we start to see a change, but it doesn't, um, I don't want to touch it at this stage because that would just be, people who say slime is messy, that's, that's what happens is they touched it too early. Use your spatula. Now, when we do this in the studio, a lot of times, that was about another eighth of a teaspoon, by the way. When we do this in the studio, a lot of times, we do let the kids just go to town with their hands, mixing it up. But um, that's because we're here in an art studio and, you know, we can do that. If you're at home and you don't want the mess, just use a spatula. So you can see it's starting to come together, right? So it's staying in a, in a ball. I can scrape the bottom and it all kind of stays into a lump. Kind of squish it down, scrape the bottom, bring it back together, fold it over itself. When I start to see something that looks like, um, like strings or like hairs when I pull it up, because it's holding onto the bottom, that's when I know it's just about time for me to grab it with my hands. Almost. All right, so I think we're good. We're ready for the next step. If you stop here, it's just gonna be a sticky mess, but we wanna do a lot of kneading and a lot of squishing. So I'm gonna do that with borax on my hands, just a real little bit, just a couple drops. I rub them together so my hands are wet. And by pre-wetting my hands, then this will not stick as badly to my fingers. I roll it out of the bowl, grab onto it. A good batch of slime is not going to stick to your hands. It's not going to be sticky. It's not gonna to stick to the table. It's going to stick to itself. That's what you're looking for with slime. If it's, if it's, you know, it's sticking to everything, then we need to do a lot more kneading and we need to do a, a lot, or a little bit more borax. Not a lot more borax, but maybe a little bit. So we've got our purple slime here. You can see it's not on my hands. Nice and stretchy, nice and squishy. We could take my one out of my bowl here. The way I did the, the swirls, in case you were wondering, is I made all the colors and then I made them into like ribbon candy, like I made it into ribbons and then just spun it together until it made these beautiful swirls. So if you're making slime for Valentine's Day, this is a really fun one to do and give away. It makes cute little, like you portion it out into little mason jars or little plastic cups with lids, like little portion cups, which is what we do for our slime parties. So all sorts of good things. Now with these, this type of slime, which is kind of an opaque slime, we wouldn't do probably the add-ins. So like I've got some sitting here in a fun little, oops, dropped it. The fun little confetti, right? Little heart confetti. I'm gonna be making some clear slime here in just a little bit. And that's where I'll add in the confetti because I can really see it. If I put the confetti in this one, what happens is it's just lumpy slime then because the, the confetti gets embedded into the slime. And since it's not see-through, it just changes the texture of it. It doesn't really, unless I open it up and I pop out one of the little heart confettis, I can't see exactly what it is. So the this type of stuff, the add-ins like the confetti and sometimes even the glitter works really well if you're using a, a clear slime recipe, which is, which is the next one that I'm gonna do and get on our blog. So I hope that that helps. Give me, a, I'll give you a tip on washing this because I know that can be kind of intimidating for people. This is our tip. This is again from the dollar store, but you can probably get them anywhere. It's just a dish sponge, right? So if I take this over to my sink and get it wet, and then I use the brush in just a circular motion, it all comes off without any trouble whatsoever. So it just needs that abrasive, it needs the scrubbing action. I hope that that is a good tip for you. I hope that you try out making some slime at home. I hope it doesn't destroy your kitchen. 
If you have any trouble, you want to troubleshoot with it, let me know and I'll be happy to, to give you my best slime tips so that you guys can have fun with this at home. And then, of course, you can always just send the kids to the studio and we'll do it with them. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and I will chat with you guys soon. Thanks so much.